mix of our term, which means you are working on your project two, and we are nearing really close to the finish line. As always with these webinars, I'm going to go through the PowerPoint and explain your large assignment for the week. And then at the end, I will be open to questions. Just remember that also for this week, you have to respond to classmates in the discussion forum, and it's all tying together as we work on refining our research questions, our thesis statements, and how we're using our sources. All right, so I am going to get started. And again, if you have any questions, just let me, just, you can write them in the box or just wait till the very end. But I will probably not be answering them until the end. All right, so project two is your research plan and your introduction. So first, where can you find your template? Go to 621, so um, what would normally be module six, but theme three, week six. 621, progress check one. Click on the link and then you can download the template. And you can literally just write it right in there like we did with the topic exploration worksheet and the secondary source analysis. Use the document we give you because that, that will help you make sure you've completed each section and that will help us know that you've completed each section. All right. So this is what we're asking you to do in the, the first part, the research plan part. And it sounds like a lot overall because we want you to include a revised research question, list your two secondary sources, a three to five sentence explanation of your event's historical context, a three to five sentence discussion of how its historical context influenced your event, your list of primary sources, your two primary sources, another three to five sentence explanation of how these sources relate to your secondary sources, and finally, yet another three to five sentence explanation of how your primary sources add to your understanding of the topic. But there is a method, a method to our madness in why we've asked you to do it this way. It's because this part, this part one, this research plan, you're going to be able to use at least about 70% of it to write the introduction that we ask you to do on the second part of Project 2. So let's go through the research plan, and you can see that by the end, I just realized I misspelled research. Oh, well, I will be correcting that, um, but sorry for that. So for the research plan, we can go through, and you can use the majority of it for the introductory paragraph we're also asking you to write. Okay, so let's break down what we need you to do. The research question should be one of the revised research questions you submitted in Theme 2. So just go back to your um, secondary source analysis and your topic exploration worksheet and where you submitted your revised research questions and where you received feedback from your instructor on these questions. And take whichever one is your favorite. That might be whichever one you feel is your strongest. And choose that one. We're asking you to focus on just one for this assignment. Next, simply list the full bibliographic information or citation for two of your secondary sources. Remember, all sources at all times for this course must come from the research kit. So choose your secondary sources from the research kit and put the full information. This is where it gets fun. Now we need to figure out historical context. So what is historical context? Historical context is the story that explains why your research question is important. For this assignment, for this class, your historical context is most likely going to deal with the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. So you're going to want to potentially start with World War II, the development of nuclear weaponry and the atomic bomb the continuation of the war in the Pacific. And again, this is not a lot. This is three to five sentences. So you are literally giving a very brief overview of how the United States reached the point where it dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. What you also want to include, then, is move on to how historical context caused or shaped your event. So you're answering why the events you described above caused the U.S. to drop the bomb on Hiroshima. So give another three to five sentences where you explain why what happened shaped your event. Why did World War II cause us to drop the bomb? Why did the development of nuclear weapons cause us to drop the bomb? How did we get there? So in 
the first three or five sentences, you're just giving us the story. I always say, think of it like you're explaining this to a group of 12-year-olds. So you want to give enough detail that they understand what's happening, but you're not going to go too in-depth, and you can't because it's only three to five sentences. So you're just providing enough background that we all know where you're going, and then you're going to give enough to explain why it happened. So why did we decide to drop the bomb? What was the motivation for us to drop the bomb? Make sure as you're writing this that you include citations from both your secondary sources in your three to five sentences. You want to have footnotes or endnotes, at least one for each source in this three to five sentences to support, to show where your evidence is from, to show where you learned about the topic from. I will leave it up to you, obviously, to decide how to do it, but you are going to make, you need to make sure that you include footnotes or endnotes. And remember, your, your instructor is going to be looking for these. Okay, so those are it for our secondary sources. We're using our secondary sources for historical context. We're using them to tell us the story of who, what, when, where, and very importantly, why we dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Now we turn to our primary sources. Again, you're going to choose two. You're going to give us the full bibliographic information or citation for these sources. And remember that these must be from your research kit. Next, and this is, I think the wording on this one sometimes is difficult for students. So the next is, in three to five sentences, explain if your primary source su supports your secondary source. That's how I put it. Basically, it's supposed to be how is your primary source related to your secondary source. So questions you might want to ask yourselves are, does this primary source support the conclusions in the secondary source? Would it be good evidence for the secondary source? Or conversely, does this primary source disprove what this secondary source? Does it offer a different argument or a different understanding of what happened? And finally, what would be very important, does your secondary source actually use that primary source as evidence? And for, for many of ours, we might find out that, yes, this primary source was used as evidence in this secondary source. So this is what you want to think. You're basically trying to determine the relationship between your primary source and the secondary source. And the easiest ways to do this are to ask yourself, does this primary source prove the argument of the secondary source? Does it disprove the argument of the secondary source, and or is it used as evidence by the secondary source? And that's the relationship between the primary and secondary sources you are using. Finally, in three to five sentences, explain the unique view or information your primary source gives you. Basically, why is your primary source important? Why are you reading this primary source? What is this primary source telling you that other primary sources can't? Why did you choose this primary source? And that's going to be the unique view or information. It's going to be, what does this primary source tell me that other sources cannot? Why is this source important? And with specifics, always make sure you are giving specific examples, such as this primary source gives us the interior thoughts of President Truman when he was getting ready to drop the bomb. This primary source gives us an overview of the wounds received by survivors of the bomb. You want to give me the very specific information that this primary source reveals. Okay, so those are our secondary sources and our primary sources. We've now kind of mined them for a lot of information, a lot of understanding of the topic. Now it is time to craft our introduction. So, like I said before, we're actually going to be able to use a lot of the assignment the first half of this assignment in creating the introduction. First, for your introduction, we want a three to five sentence discussion of the background information about your historical event to capture the interest of your audience. So for this, literally look back what you just wrote about your secondary sources. You could even potentially tie in your primary source overview about the information, but look back in your secondary source, those three to five sentences on historical context. Could you use that in your introduction? Would it work well to set up the story? Most likely, yes, because it should answer the who, what, why, when, where, and how of the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. 
so it should stand in as a very good introduction. Remember, you might want to give your reader an exciting opening. Now, the dropping of the atomic bomb, I'm going to say right there, is in and of itself it's an opening that is usually gripping. It has a lot of human potential. But you might want to throw in a question or a hook or something else to really draw on your reader. And when writing other history papers, you might have to do this more if the topic is a little drier. For example, my own research, I write about taxes and church councils. So sometimes it's hard to make it a little more exciting. But for this, a lot of times the event speaks for itself. So you might not need to do that. All right, now after those three to five sentences of historical context, we need a two to three sentence thesis statement based on your research question that addresses your historical event and explains how your event has been influenced by historical context. Well, again, you're going to go back to your research question from above and you're going to answer it. And then look at your discussion of how your event was influenced by historical context and that goes there. So do you see how we're using a lot of what we did in the research plan to craft our introduction? For your thesis statement, when you're answering your research question, be specific. Offer your reader a plan of attack. If your research question is about something to do with the impact, the physical, the physical radiation um, wounds received by survivors after the dropping of the atomic bomb, like how bad were they? I, I don't think that's anybody's research question, but let's pretend that's someone's research question. You would want your thesis statement to be about how the wounds received were significantly bad and they left not only physical lacerations but also ultimately people had radiation poisoning and various other problems. So you want to be specific in your answer for your thesis because you need something to prove. Now if you're wondering is my thesis statement too specific, ask your advisor. Put in your project checks, right? In this one we have project checks for steps one and two that you can submit to us and we can give you feedback throughout the week. I usually say with asking for feedback throughout the week, make sure you submit it by Friday evening to give your instructor time to read it and you time to incorporate the, the revisions your instructor might suggest. Usually I would think when you give it to your instructor, you might need a 24 hour turnaround time, which is again why I'd say get it to them by Friday night. They can hopefully get it back to you by Saturday night or Sunday morning and then you'll have Sunday to work on it. Also, a good rule of thumb, if you are submitting these project checks throughout the week, email your instructor to let him or her know, because if we are not daily checking who has submitted, maybe we've already graded, maybe we're unable to look at that, then we might not notice it. But if you email us and ask us to check, then we will do so, and we'll be able to get back to you, and then you can fix all of your work. Okay, but so the beginning, the research question, the thesis statement, Look at how your discussion of your event was influenced by historical context. Again, you already wrote that. So now you can just copy and paste and move it down. Finishing the introduction. Now you need a two, two to three sentence explanation of how you'll use the primary and secondary sources you listed in your research plan in your hypothetical research paper. For these, what would be good? So you're introducing your sources, right? I find a good rule of thumb is one sentence to introduce the primary sources and one sentence to introduce the secondary sources. Now the secondary sources have much longer titles so that sentence might just naturally be longer. You may want to have one sentence on the primary sources where you say evidence found in the memoirs of President Truman as well as in the radio announcements from the bombing give us an insight into what was happening both personally and publicly during this time. So there, that's one sentence that might introduce your primary sources. And then for your secondary sources, you might want to say articles by Malloy and Frisch also give insight into what, was, what the scientists were thinking as they developed the atomic bomb. So a good rule of thumb would be one sentence for primary sources and one sentence for secondary sources. And what you want to answer with each of these sentences is not just what these sources are about, but why they're important, why you're using them. So you might want to say they give a unique insight, they set the scene, they're, the research questions they ask or the conclusions they come to are different from those of other 
uh, historians writing about this topic. You want to explain why you think it's important that we use these sources to answer this question. Proofread. Okay, so we just did a lot of copying and pasting. And what we need to do when we copy and paste for our introduction, the best thing I have found to do, whenever I, before I submit any work, actually, but is to read your introduction aloud. If you read it aloud, that's how you're going to catch any time the sentences aren't flowing well or the grammar is off. Because again, if you are cutting and pasting and putting this all together, it might not flow together nicely. You might need to add some transition words. You might need to fix um, your verb, your noun verb tenses. You might need to add a sentence to act as a bridge between some thoughts. That's what you want to do. And it's best if you read it out loud to find out where you need to make these corrections. Because when we read it into our heads, sometimes we just get into a lull, a rhythm, and we don't think about it. But if we read it out loud, we catch our own writing mistakes much faster. Also, as always, double check spelling. Make sure that you've answered each assignment component. And then submit and go discuss your work in the forum, right? Because it is forum week and you have to respond to your classmates. Okay, that's all I have to say about this week's topic. Does anyone have any questions about the assignment or anything that they'd like me to go back over? Or any other assignment um, or just aspect of the course that has been concerning anyone else? Okay, I do see typing. I appreciate all questions. Hopefully I have answers for them. If not, I will make up answers. While we're waiting for the text to come through, um, next week and the week after, we're going to be focusing a lot on your final, final project, project three, where we're going to be asking for an overview. And then that's it. Only two more weeks of class. I know. All right, still waiting for the text to come through. Okay. So this seems like answering questions more than developing. Well, okay, so in a way, yes, but actually that's what a true research paper, a true introduction to a research paper does in a way. It sets up the scene. And you might think, well, if I put all the information out there, what am I going to talk about on the paper? Well, in the paper, you're going to prove what you said. So yes, in the introduction, you're going to give the background, that's the context. You're going to say what your thesis statement is, what you plan to prove, and then you're going to say, here are the sources I'm going to use to prove it. So that's what this introduction, if we look at it as a whole, is doing. It's giving us background, your thesis statement, and the sources you're going to use to prove that thesis statement. And then the rest of your paper would naturally follow, where you'd say, here's my argument, this is what I'm working on. So yes, it is a lot like that, it does seem like that, but that's actually, in a way, what, um, what research papers are going to be like. Um, okay, uh, I just saw that someone is unsure of what is needed. Um, you can email me, I'm going to put my email in. You can email me, and you might also want to reach out to your instructor. You can email both of us at the same time to say specifically what you would like to work on. I just put my email address in there. My email address for those listening is e.burbridge at snhu.edu. Yeah, I see a couple of more people writing right now. Oh, no, you shouldn't. No, yeah, you're no, you don't have to use first-person narrative. Um, you are explaining the topic, but you don't have to use I or we. You just say the, during World War II, tensions were high, the atomic bomb was dropped on Japan by the United States, the scientists who decided to drop the bomb were believed that they were creating it to do X, Y, and Z. So yeah, you do not have to use first person narrative. Yeah, no, not a problem. So Catherine, you need to use... Um, they must be from the research kit. 
in your class. All primary and secondary sources have to be from the research kit. You are going into 621 and you are using a template for this assignment. Here, I'll go back to that page in case people weren't here at the very beginning. So the template that you are using for this assignment is six to, can be found under 621 Project Progress Check 1. That's where you're going to be using for this, um, Elizabeth. This is the template. So no, not the secondary source analysis worksheet. We just remind you to look that over when you're talking about what secondary sources you're going to write about or research questions. But we are going to use a different template that can be found under 621 Progress Check 1. Okay, am I catching all the questions? Oh, you're welcome. These are great questions, guys. Keep them coming. These are very helpful, I'm sure, to everyone who is listening. Much better for us to clarify information now than for people on Saturday night to suddenly realize they're not quite sure what they're supposed to do. I see typing, so I'm just waiting for a couple more people to type. It says multiple attendees are typing. Still multiple attendees. Oh, hold on. Let's see. My box. Oh, that's great. Yes, no, I'm glad that you're waiting for clarification. The recording should be available by tomorrow evening. I have already put up the PowerPoint with the misspelled research question. Yes. Um, but I have, or research plan. I have put the PowerPoint up in the learning community, but the recording should be up by tomorrow evening. So if you just want the PowerPoint, though, that's up in the learning community. These are good, guys. Oh, you're welcome. You too. Have a good night. Everybody stay safe from tornadoes if you're in tornado area. You are welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Are we, are we feeling like we understand this? Again, you can always ask questions in the learning community. You can email your instructor or me, and you can reach out to your peer tutor. Anybody have any more questions? I see a couple of typing, some attendees are typing. No? All right, um, if we don't have any more questions, then it might be time to sign off. Is that okay with everyone? If we finish up the evening and I send this off to get turned into an awesome YouTube webinar? Great, yes, good night. Thank you for coming, guys. This was great last week. For those of you who attended, know that it was a, a smaller gathering the night before Thanksgiving. So it's nice to have a group again. All right, good night, guys. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording.